Hey guys, welcome to part six of PHP front to back. In this video, we're going to be talking about functions. Okay, this is most likely going to be a really quick video. Um, and don't worry, we're almost uh, we're almost in the clear as far as this this basic stuff: variables, arrays, loops, things like that. Um, and then we'll be looking at some cooler stuff. Uh, you know, we'll look at um, making post requests and uh, working with a database, things like that. Okay, but we do have to do this, this, all this basic stuff for people that are brand new to P, not only PHP but to programming in general. Okay, so I'm going to create a new file in my PHP sandbox and we're going to save this as functions.php. Oh, the F didn't come out. Okay, and basically, let's put in our tags here. And basically, a function is pretty much just a block of code, a block of code that can be repeatedly called. Okay, so we can define a function, put in whatever code we want, and then we can call that throughout our script. Okay, um, now there's, there's something that I wanted to talk about earlier on, but I forgot, and that is uh, how to format or the different ways that we can format not just functions but also variables, classes, and so on. So basically we have three main types that programmers use. Okay, first of all we have camel case. So camel whoop, what the so camel case would look like this. Okay, so it starts off with a lowercase letter and then every word will have a will start with a capital. Okay, that's camel case. Then we also have lowercase with underscores. So that would be something like my underscore function. Okay, so it would start with a lowercase and then every word would have a, an underscore in between it. And then we also have something called Pascal case. And that's basically camel case, but it starts with a capital as well. Now in PHP, when it comes to variables and functions, usually it's one of these two. Um, I would say that it's it's camel case or, uh, the most of the time, but you'll also see this. This Pascal case is usually used for classes. Um, when you use object-oriented programming and you create classes for your objects, that's when you'll use this Pascal case. All right, but usually you'll see one of these two, and we're going to use camel case. That's what we've been using. Now when you get into frameworks, different frameworks use different uh, different styles. For instance, CodeIgniter uses this more, uses the underscore. Um, but if you get into, let's say, Symphony or something like that, they'll, you'll use the camel case more, okay? Um, and for classes, Pascal case. So those are the basic types, okay? So I just wanted to throw that in there. So a function is a block of code that can be repeatedly called. So to define it, we use the keyword function and then we can name it. So let's just call this simple function. Okay, so we, we name it and then we put our parentheses and then we have this open curly brace, close curly brace, and all of our code goes in there. I'm sure that I'm preaching to the choir for some of you guys. I know that you know this, but there are people that don't that are just learning. Okay, so let's say for this function, all we want to do is just echo out a string. We'll just echo hello world. Okay, so that gives us a function. Now if I save this and we go to this, so localhost slash PHP, uh, what is it, PHP sandbox slash functions dot PHP. Now we see it's not putting out hello world on the screen because all we've done to this point is define the function. We haven't called it, we haven't used it. So if we want to call it, then we have to just use it. So simple function. Okay, just like that. And then if we go and we reload, we get hello world. Okay, that runs whatever code we have in here. Okay, so this is create simple function. And then this run simple function. So that's as, as basic as it gets really. Now you can also have, you can also include parameters or sometimes called arguments. And that's basically values that you can plug into the function. So 
uh, let's say we want to create a function called say hello okay um, and then we want this to take in a parameter of a name now notice that I use the uh, the dollar sign here because this is actually a variable so you have to include that money sign just as if you were using a variable outside of the parameters okay um, let me just put a comment here So my goal is to is to for you guys to be able to have this code to look back on when you need it. That's why I'm formatting it like this. Um, now, when we call say hello, just like we called simple function, we can input uh, data. We can input a name. So we can use that down here. So let's say we want to echo. Uh, let's make this easier and use double quotes. So we'll say echo hello and then whatever is plugged in okay and then we'll just do an, a line break so down here let's call it we'll say hello and we'll plug in a name here let's say Joe and I'm just gonna comment this function out so if we reload we get hello Joe okay now we can call this as many times as we want we can say hello to Bob reload and that's going to do hello Bob so we can call it as many times as we want in the script now let's see what happens if we run say hello but we don't put a parameter in even though it takes a parameter so let's go ahead and run that and it gives us an error an uncaught argument count error too few arguments okay because it takes one but we're giving it zero so what we can do here is we can actually set a default for this if the user doesn't put in a name and we can do that by simply setting this equal to let's say world alright so we'll save that and now if we reload we get hello world because it sees that the user didn't plug in a parameter but it sees the default of world so that's what it's going to use uh, but then again if we go and we put something in here let's say Tim that's going to overwrite world okay because world is the default this is actually what we want to use alright so pretty simple stuff and I should also mention that these are user defined functions PHP has a whole mess of, uh, of core functions that you can use that are part of the, the language okay these are all we're defining these and we've already used some for instance uh, when we looked at arrays we used print r and var dump those are those are functions that are built into PHP. All right, so let's comment that out. Now we can also um, we can also return values from functions, and that's usually what you do when you're when you're using when you're programming for real. Um, we're just echoing things out just to show you that uh, it does whatever we put in here. But usually you want to get some kind of value back from a function. All right, so to do that. Let me give you an example. I'm just going to say function and we're going to call this add numbers. And just to show you as well that we can put more than one parameter, so we'll say num1, comma, num2. And then we want to first of all show you if we echo num1 plus num2. And then down here say add numbers and we can pass in anything here let's just say two and three so if we reload we get five so this is by echoing it out now if you want to return you can just use the keyword return and then whatever you want to return now if I save this and I run it you can see it's not giving us five anymore that's because we're just returning it here there's nothing about echoing out onto the screen we're just this function is going to give us a value back so then we have to do something with that value such as echo it okay so we'd echo it down here and then we get our five okay so uh, in most cases you're going to return something from a function let me just put a comment up here okay so the last thing I want to talk about is passing arguments by reference okay so normally if we have a variable let's say uh, my num and we'll set that to 10. So if we pass this in as an argument, 
normally that's by value and it's not going to manipulate this value outside of the function but we can pass it in by reference if we want to um, if we want it to do that so let me just give you an example because it's a little hard to explain so let's create a function called add five and that's it's going to do exactly that it's going to take in a number and then it's going to just take that number and plus equals five now if you don't know what this is this plus equals it's the same as saying num equals uh, num plus five it's just a shorter way of writing it so we're taking the number and adding five so let's create another one and we're gonna call it add 10 and then same thing it's gonna take a number and we're going to just say num plus equals 10. Now this add 10, I'm going to pass it in by reference by putting an ampersand, whoop, an ampersand in front of this. Okay, normally it's passed in by value, which is the default. Um, so what I want to do is I want to run this number through both of these and see what we get. So let's say add 5 and we'll pass in my num and then we'll echo my num. Actually, let's let's put quotes around it, and I'll just say value, and then it'll do a line break, and then let's run it through add ten. Okay, and then we'll echo that out. So value. Sorry, it's very hard to talk and type. So then we'll say my num and a line break. Okay, so it's so this value is going through both of these functions. This one is passed by reference. So I'm also gonna um, comment this out. All right, so let's go ahead and reload, and then we get value 10, value 20. So when it goes through add five, you can see that this doesn't change when we echo it out down here. It's still 10. But when we go through add 10, it actually takes this, adds 10 to it, and changes this to 20 because it's passed in by reference. So that's the difference, okay? One will manipulate this number, one won't. Um, now, I honestly don't use this very much, this, this um, by reference. Maybe some other programmers do, I don't know. I just know that the stuff that I've created with PHP, I very rarely have to use that. Um, there's other ways to do things. All right, so, uh, but I did want to just put it in there just to, to mention it. All right, so that's pretty much all there is to know about functions at this point, at this stage. So we're going to go ahead and stop here, and in the next video, we'll most likely be talking about conditionals, so if statements, if else, switches, uh, and also operators. All right, so thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next part.